Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to start off with a close read of Francis Scott Key and the National Anthem. And then I'm going to go over the worksheets with you and show you what you need to do. So get your War of 1812 reader and let's look. I think if I remember correctly, um, the chapter starts on page 70. Yes, chapter eight, Francis Scott Key and the National Anthem. Page 70. So find it and we will begin reading it. What? What, Bub? Go wait a second, okay? On the deck. Okay, chapter 8 Francis Scott Key and the National Anthem. On September 13, 1814, British ships opened fire on Fort McHenry. They fired rockets and mortars. That means they started shooting at our Fort McHenry. The soldiers in the fort would have fired back, but there was not much point. The guns in the fort were old. They could not hit the British ships, so they would be shooting for nothing because it, it, they wouldn't reach it and it would be pointless. They were saving their ammunition. The British ships kept firing for a long time. They fired all day. They fired on into the night. And here is a painting of the British ships right here, fi firing rockets um, and cannons at Fort McHenry. An American named Francis Scott Key watched the British attack. He was on a boat in the harbor. Key was not a soldier. So he was just a civilian, just a regular um, person just in the harbor on a boat. <clears throat> he did not fight in the battle, but he was able to see it. He could see the British ships blasting away. He could see Fort McHenry. He could also see the huge flag Mrs. Pickersgill had made. Key kept his eye on the American flag. As long as the flag was still flying at the fort, America was still in the battle. It meant that the troops in Fort McHenry had not given up. If the flag went down, that would mean America was no longer fighting. That would mean that the troops in the fort had given up. So he didn't want to see that our flag wasn't still flying over the fort. That would be bad news for him. He was happy every time he would look and see it. Key watched all day. He was still watching when the sun set. He was proud that the flag was still flying. And here is a portrait of Francis Scott Key, what he looked like. At night, it was harder for Key to see, but there were flashes of light. Sometimes a rocket would go streaking through the darkness. Sometimes a bomb would explode and light up the sky. The flashes of light allowed Key to see the flag. Um, and I said to you yesterday, that's kind of like when you watch fireworks at night and they light up the sky and you could see things around you. So that's what he was doing. That was his only way to see the flag at night was when those bombs would explode. The firing went on until just before dawn. Dawn is early morning where the sun begins to rise. Then it stopped. The sun had not come up yet. It was still dark. There were no rockets blasting. There were no bombs bursting in the air. Key could not see much. The silence was puzzling. But did it mean, what did it mean? Was the battle over? Had the soldiers in the fort given up? Key could not tell. He was confused. He's like, what's going on? It's so quiet. I can't see anything. I don't hear anything. Key waited nervously. At last, the sun rose. Key looked at the fort. And what did he see? The soldiers had raised the huge flag that Mrs. Pickerskill had made. It was not the U.S. soldiers who had given up. It was the British sailors. They stopped firing on the fort. Key felt a surge of joy. He felt pride too. The brave men in the fort had not given up. He was overcome with happiness and joy. And because of that, he was inspired. So let's see what happens. Here's a photo or a painting of Francis Scott Key looking on at the big, huge flag that he saw when the sun rose that day. Key felt inspired. He hoped to share with others what he had seen. 
He needed to tell what it was like to wait and wait, and then see the flag still flying in the morning. Key reached into his pocket. He found an old letter. On the back, he wrote a poem. Here is the first part of his poem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. So notice how he's asking a lot of questions in this. He's saying, does that star-spangled banner still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? He did not know then one day his poem would become our national anthem. And hopefully this was familiar to you and that you recognized it um, and you um, knew it was our Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. And here's a picture of the flag that was flying at Fort McHenry after the attack on Baltimore. And you can see that it's kind of, um, it's battered here. You can see it has some holes, it has some rips. That's because it made it through the battle. Um, so that's our close read for today, just to remind you of what we read the other day. Now, if we get our workbook pages and we go to 22.1, we're talking about topic sentences. Topic sentences are the main sentence of the paragraph. It's what the entire paragraph is about. So it's not just one small detail. It's um, usually found somewhere at the beginning of the paragraph because it kind of sets up the whole paragraph for you and tells you what the whole thing is about. So if we look... It says, draw a box around the topic sentence in each paragraph. Cookies are the best treat. They are very sweet and tasty. Also, there are lots of different yummy flavors of cookies. If you get tired of one kind of cookie, you can always try another kind. I can't think of one thing that's bad about cookies. So when you ask yourself, what is this whole thing about um, that would tell you what the topic sentence is? And the whole thing is that cookies are the best treat. And these are all details on why cookies are the best treat. They're sweet, tasty, yummy flavors. You'll like all cookies. That's the topic sentence, so put a box around that. Let's look at the next paragraph. Joyce is not good at singing. When she sings, she can never seem to hit the right notes. If she's supposed to sing high, Joyce sings low. If she's supposed to sing low, Joyce sings high. Even Joyce's dog runs away when she sings. So if you take a minute and think, the dog runs away when she sings low. It's supposed to be high. When she sings high, it's supposed to be low. All those details tell us that Joyce is not good at singing. So we would put a box around that sentence because that is our topic sentence. Notice both are right at the beginning of the paragraph. Last, yes, last one. Hugo is good at drawing. In fact, he once won a drawing contest. Hugo drew a car for the contest, but he can draw all sorts of things. If you ask Hugo to draw an animal or a person or a plant, his drawings will look just like the real thing. He is the best artist I know. Topic sentence is, Hugo is good at drawing. So please box that. <clears throat> so that was just a little introduction of topic sentences. And then if we scroll down, this is the one that I want you to submit, 22.2, building sentences. We did this last week, and it's kind of fun. So you're going to rewrite the sentence six times, adding a little more details each time. Jack picked it up. So if you answer the question, what did Jack pick up? you would say, Jack picked up a book. Okay, number two, why did Jack pick it up? Jack picked up a book to read. What did Jack do with the thing that he picked up? Jack picked up a book and began to read it. Okay, so you're going to go on and try to add details each time to expand the sentence. Um, and it goes on to the back, when did he pick it up? How did he pick it up? So that would be an adverb, maybe he quickly picked it up. And what did he do after? So some of them repeat a little bit and you could change the sentence, but let's see what you come up with. Um, starting with that first sentence, Jack picked it up. And this is the worksheet that you will submit. Then finally, 
worksheet 22.3, so like the one yesterday, again, find the secret message. We have a word box, spaghetti, cafeteria, broccoli, salami, kiwi, lollipop, chili, Italian, zucchini, pizza. We had lunch in the, I think cafeteria makes sense. So you would put C-A-F-E-T-E-R-I-A on the line. And then we see we have a six, a three, and an eight. So an F and the E, I'll remember those, are the six and the three. So you would go down to six and put the F and the F and the three would be the E and you're going to make a secret message. So this one's for fun, okay? And that's our worksheets for today. Thank you. I hope you guys have a fabulous Tuesday.